has a huge impact on college sports. Man, because it's whatever the media portrays of you is who you are, you know, unless you actually know that person firsthand. If the media portrays you to be something bad, then you're bad in the eyes of thousands, millions of people, because that's all they're seeing. Well, obviously, you know, media likes uh, to tell stories that are attractive to people because that's where you know the most interest is drawn from people. Well, the, the media could make you break you, man. You know, it, it all depends. If if I'm Stephen A. Smith and and I like something, then you know people are like, oh yeah, I see Stephen A. Smith's point. Yeah, that's a good point. He reaches out to the masses, you know, where people like you or myself, you know, like we don't have that power or we don't have a hundred million followers on Twitter, you know, where people could hear me out. It could be negative and it could be positive feedback. If you have bad student athletes, if they're cheating on tests, if they're not going to class, you know, if they're abusing, you know, substances. I think we've seen some of that in Louisville and the Dukes of the world, where something bad comes out about about a player, and then they might leave. There's always going to be someone that's trying to break the rules, whether it's a coach, whether it's assistant coach. I mean, we see it all the time in the media. Live events are still key in sports coverage. It's, it's everything. We recruit a kid from Texas. His parents can see all of the games because we now have it on ESPN. Because if you're a parent and you want to see your child and you're, you're from the West Coast, but he's going on the East Coast, well, most likely you're going to have to watch most of those through media. You know, and even now, comparatively from in the past, um, broadcast on ESPN and like the Big Ten Sports Network that is um, widely accessible now via both the internet and uh, the cable stations and local. So, you know, depending on where you live, there's always stations that, and TV stations that are broadcasting like just all NCAA sports, so. So if you have a live event, you will have sponsors lined up to try to run their commercials and pay big money to get in front of the eyeballs of sports fans. Why? Because fan is short for fanatical. So sports fans are a little fanatical, they're emotional. You, you can't typically get people who are just sitting here watching television unless they're watching music or watching sports. They don't have an emotional tie like they do with those two things. And so that's why sponsors and television uh, networks and college conferences can charge so much money because they know that sponsors want to get in front of excited, emotional people. I think younger kids can, yeah, look up to college athletes, most definitely. Um, even coaches as well. You know, coaches, um, players, they admire them because they, they see that maybe that person came from an act, you know, where they came from, you know. So looking up to them in many different ways aspiring to be as good an athlete, aspiring to be as good a person, um, aspiring to be as well-spoken as that person. You know, it could be multi multitude of things, multitude of things. Because when you think about things like Twitter or Instagram, any of the social medias where your face is being blown up, um, let's say you're a prize recruit or you're a high-time player, your face is going to be everywhere. And kids love that. Kids love seeing themselves on TV. Kids like to see themselves on video games. These kids look up to our uh, basketball players or our soccer players, you know, like just as, man, that's someone I want to be with. I think it's just, like I said, depends. I think winning is the factor, you know, like if, you, if your team keeps winning, I think you're going to draw attention from the media. And of course, what, what do sponsors want? They want wherever the media is at, you know, they want wherever the attention is at because their product is not going to sell if, if the media doesn't cover you. And with the high television fees, because it all goes back to how much can ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, um, ESPN3, and also ESPNU, which is just for college universities. You got the Pac-10 network. The Big Ten network, SEC network, uh, Fox Sports. Charge sponsors to run their advertisement during live events. Live events are still key in sports coverage. It's, it's everything. So if you have a live event, you will have sponsors lined up to try to run their commercials and pay big money to get in front of the eyeballs of sports fans. Why? Because that's what people are more interested in. You know, people watch sports and they see their favorite players and their favorite sport and their favorite teams. So I can understand why. Money from ESPN 
the money from the sponsors has really turned uh, college sports into a professional entity. It always has been that way. It's just now people are starting to call them on the carpet for it. Yet another arm of the big business of college athletics and the apparel companies and sponsors, they get in because they want the exposure. Each team is going to have a sponsorship. Most teams will. Um, if you're Division One and you're quote unquote mid major or high major, you're going to get sponsored either by the Nikes, the Under Armors, the Reeboks, the Adidas. Um, we happen to be under Adidas. When kids come to our games, they see what type of shoes we're wearing, they see the, the logo on the jersey, um, and it can help boost sales, and then they want to go out and buy those. John Gross, the men's basketball coach at University of Illinois, he's got a specific deal with Nike. So he gets a certain amount of money, he gets apparel, they give him money for his basketball camps, and he might have to do a promotional tour. And so that's why sponsors and television uh, networks and college conferences can charge so much money because they know that sponsors want to get in front of excited, emotional people. You can't typically get people who are just sitting here watching television unless they're watching music or watching sports. They don't have an emotional tie. You know, and over time, you know, it has become a money industry, you know, especially college especially. You know, like uh, a few years ago, it wasn't about the money. It was just about you representing the school and that's it. It definitely has to deal with TV companies and the amount of TV time each school gets, the, the amount of money they're going to get. To help sports in general, um, when you have more TV revenue, you have revenue in general that you're making, it helps your schools. Are the schools and NCAA all together, it's almost like a funnel, right? If one's not, if one's not meeting up to par, NCAA is here, your school is here, you're going to lose out on this much in between. You're playing every night, like you're, say you're a Duke basketball team or Alabama football, you're seeing a lot. You know, an Alabama university where they need millions, near, nearly a billion dollars, if not over a billion dollars to support their athletic departments because you're, you're making them travel, you know, at a certain night for them to play a, a game at 8 p.m. On a, on a weeknight and, you know, it compromises their ability to, to wake up and be fresh for school the next day. When you do have that, that schedule that's more unpredictable, just... I, I can only imagine that they get X amount of dollars for that, and that just keeps blowing, blowing up. It's so hard, and it's, it's such a touchy area. This is, you know, this is something that's been going back and forth for many, many years. How do you manage it? Uh, how do you dictate uh, what one guy gets in one sport opposed to uh, another male or female get it in another sport. Why? You know, why? Does that mean we would have to go back and pay all the other athletes that, that paid and produced for their sport as well? You are essentially getting paid. Just because you don't see that money in your pocket, it's money you don't ever have to pay back. I mean, we're here for school, right? We're a st student is first, athlete second, we're a student. I think in many cases athletes are being used. Uh, they're not being paid uh, to perform uh, in sports. And so, you know, the NCAA, they're about making money. Let's just be honest. They're not really interested in educating people because if they were, they'd do a much better job of it. What's your take on that, if I can ask? Do you think that you think we should pay athletes?